Good morning, guys. I want to show you guys a good way to get rid of fungal gnats. So I cover my plants with cinnamon when I start noticing fungal gnats. I also have mosquito bits in there because this one was really infested. Mosquito bits help too, but I think that cinnamon works great. And another thing that I like to do if you're grossed out by bugs, maybe skip ahead a little bit because I'm about to change this out. So I discovered these when we had fleas on my cat. And it is a flea trap, as the logo says here. And it's just a sticky pad with a light inside. And actually, this one has a lot more space on it. I might just leave it. But see how disgusting that is? Look at all those fleas. And I get my replacement ones on Amazon. Flea trap refill. And I put it by where the plant is that has all the fleas. And it collects a lot of bugs. In the summertime, it collects a lot of mosquitoes. Love those things. absolutely love this backyard. It's where I grew up and it's snowing right now. It's so beautiful. But I came out here to show you where I'm planting a lot of my container garden this coming spring. Where, what I'm, where I'm gonna plant my seedlings that I'm gonna seed soon. As you can see, it's not time yet as it's still snowing. I live here in New England. This is Massachusetts, but we're selling this house and we're going to be moving to New Hampshire. I already live there, but I mean, I'm about to find a property there, God willing. But my parents already have a house up there, so I'm going to be tr moving my garden to their house. Because if I live in an apartment now, it wouldn't work very well. So one of the things that I'm going to be moving in the spring, once it's warmer, <laughs> when I'm ready to s put everything outside, all my seedlings, is in this green stock so i'm going to take it apart i don't know how easy i know it's very heavy each one so i'm guessing i'm just going to do one layer in the truck i probably could stack them in the truck like a couple of layers but i don't want it to tip over or i don't want them to crack but they're super heavy right now because they're very waterlogged and frozen <laughs> but yeah i used this last year and i learned a lot i grew up quite a bit but not as much as i would have liked there's a facebook group all on this green stock, a community of people that use it, and oh my goodness, like what they grow is outstanding. <laughs> so, there's a couple of things that I'm going to be doing in the green stock that's a little bit different, and I'm sure by the time I go to plant, there might be more things that I've learned. But one girl on there shared how she plants root vegetables in the corners of each pocket. So if I was going to grow some lettuce here, which is, you know, very low, like it doesn't have any big roots, in the corners I can plant some carrots or some beets, you know, maybe a little bit further out, some beets. So let me show you where else I have that I can plant. Hello, Mr. Avocado Tree, how are you doing? I decided to bring this outside because I brought it inside in the late fall and it was covered in larvae. And then the next thing we knew, there were flies that were hatched all over the house. So I brought it back outside. I bought this, uh, sorry for the tangent, but I bought this um, tree from Florida. It was shipped up. It's grafted on a hardy rootstock and it's supposed to be weather resistant it's been covered by this deck here so i was going to take take the chance um it's never gonna be unless somebody i know moves to florida or somewhere warmer it's never gonna produce fruit it was uh my grief brain that was thinking otherwise it's a beautiful plant anyway and it grew double or more last summer so we'll see if it comes back to life so over here these are amazing container gardens so i have one two three four five and i have a couple more that i think i could borrow 
actually some of these I've borrowed, so maybe I've borrowed my share. But you water from the bottom. These are called grow boxes, and that's the company's name. And they're really sold for tomato growing. You can see these holes in the corner because they sell a cage that you can stick right in there. It was my first year growing tomatoes last year. Oh, it was my first year gardening. And the tomatoes kind of, they they wanted to destroy my cages and I even despite the fact that I zip tied them. Um, so we'll see how this goes. I definitely know that I need to do a single like main stem because the cage isn't heavy, it isn't strong enough for like more. So all the tomato varieties that I have are indeterminates and I plan to, I forget how many boxes I need for how many tomatoes I wanna do. Cause I wanna, I have so many cherry tomatoes. You'll see that in a bit. Um, but yeah, so this is another way that I can grow in my parents' yard. My parents' yard, I will show you in just in just a minute on this video. I'm going to be driving up to their house. It is, it's covered in flowers right now. It's covered in snow, but it's not designed to be, it's not my space and it's not for like vegetable gardening. It, it, the, my mom's love is for flowers. So uh, I will be planting in containers to keep my stuff out of the ground there. Although last year I did plant a rhubarb plant. We'll see if that comes back because that was my mom's father's and I wanted to bring a piece of it to her, um, to her yard. And I tried squash in the ground and I tried pumpkins and neither of them succeeded. So I might try to direct sow them and like do a better job of establishing. The whole yard up there has been um, like landscape fabric the it was a new build and they filled a lot with stone so i need to make sure that there's actually good soil for the plants to grow in so what we have here is a bunch of potting soil that or different aspects of potting soil that um i'm going to take um i haven't really explained much yet but the house that we're in now, this is in Massachusetts and we're selling this house soon. So I want to use up as much as I can of this soil. Some of it's old. I don't know how old because it was my mother's. Um, and so I am going to take it and use as much as I can as for seed starting because last year I bought seed starter mix, which I know is not good in and of itself, but it is organic. So I'm going to take this with me and I'll add some stuff to it. I have a bag of peat moss here, which I know is a good additive to soil for seed starting. Let's see, I don't need the DE. I got some vermiculite here. Um, this is container mix, which is actually great for seed starting, but I don't know how much I'm going to need, but I'll probably bring it up regardless. That's um, succulent mix. We got compost here, cow manure rather, and potting mix. So I'm gonna take, and then these are, these are what we um, do mulch in our um, our pool area. This is buckwheat hulls. So I'm gonna take everything, but the de and the cow manure. All right, welcome to New Hampshire. So I'm currently at my parents' house and I want to show you where I want to plant some flowers, mainly poppies. I want to plant some other flowers or try to grow from seed because I've never done that before. Marigold, things like that, echinacea, which there are plenty of echinacea here. But right here that comes up are some, a giant allium. Um, they're like these big round flowers and so I was thinking about sprinkling some poppies in there But the snow is very deep as you can see so I don't know where the seeds will end up running So I got to do some research to see what we're working with there 
because the other area that I really want to plant flowers are, so this is all a brick, or this is all a rock wall, all along there and all there. And above the rock wall here, this is, we want to do wildflowers. Right now it's a lot of grass. So I want to plant some wildflowers. I tried last year, but it was too thickly like matted down at the point that I tried to plant them. My hope is to plant poppies up there, but again, there is massive amounts of snow. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a giant cliff. So my hope is to do poppies up here, sprinkle them in with a couple of other wildflowers that I'll show you guys when I do my seeds. And then over here, I would love to do like clover and stuff, but it's not really my parents' thing. So I hope to do some, some sunflowers here or maybe even along the front of this house. This property is loaded in flowers. There's flowers everywhere. So um, this whole area, there's rose bushes up there. Um, if you go back actually on this channel, you can see a summer garden tour and you can get a better idea because right now everything is just pretty and white. Not much life. Oh, these are fun though. I think these are called Arctic Firefox or something like that. And they turn this beautiful red color. We have, I thought we had three, but maybe we just have two. And then they turn brown during the summer, I believe, and have flowers. We got them late in the fall though, so we haven't really seen them flower yet, but they're just this beautiful red color and they're gonna get bigger, I believe. I think they'll get a couple more feet. Hydrangeas are the main thing that are at this property. You can see this is a hydrangea tree right here. We have all of the flowers uh, labeled because we didn't plant them and the people that, my mom is always a really big gardener, but she wanted to see what somebody else's creativity was with this fresh property. So she let somebody else do it and then they didn't tell us what they planted. And they took the tags off of everything. So we have done a lot of research on exactly what type of hydrangeas and stuff because we have several different varieties of hydrangeas here. Lots of different flowers. Just go check out that video. I'll link it right here. There's lots of options. I'm gonna show you the back. Here's another hydrangea tree. We got some deer here. We have real deer too. Actually, we don't see that many deer. I think it's because, so back there is the lake and I'm gonna bring you down there. So now we're in the backyard. You have to go through the house because of all the snow that is piled up on the way to get down here. This is where I plan, this is a patio right here. I plan to put my green stock here. Um, actually, I might put my green stock, I might put it down there so there's a little deck down there. I just wanna make sure it gets a lot of sun. I gotta figure that out because it shades back here pretty quickly. So I'll have to figure out where I want to, as long as I can carry a hose somewhere, it'll be fine to do the green stock. So, and then my tomato plants, and then I have, I'm gonna have bags, like grow bags of vegetables as well. And for my squash and my pumpkins that I wanted to try a hand at again, I plan to do down there as well. Down, in this area is kind of undeveloped and I tried to plant squash down there and some over there but all of this and you'll see if you watch that other video this is all landscape gardens so there's different tiers you can see there's a tier here and then this is the upper tier but there's several tiers which you can kind of see if I go show you it this way and these are more high ranges of course and so there's no option to plant all that this is this was a wooded property it's been cleared um, but like I said it was professionally landscaped so they filled it and landscape fabric it to keep out weeds which is great but um <laughs> isn't great for gardening another thing I could do is try to do sunflowers along this path these are there's hydrangeas that are planted up here they have not done as well as the hydrangeas planted on this side I don't know why but if they don't survive but either way I could back sow some sunflowers behind them possibly that might look nice because of all the different tiers there's a lot of different ways to play with height so um, sunflowers could be fun with that. Oh my goodness, I'm sinking into the snow. <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna go inside. It's a little chilly, but you can see the kids playing out on the, the lake. They plowed a path and now they're riding their four-wheelers and some little kid was riding some electric vehicle as well, which is cute. It's beautiful though. 
Okay, you guys are officially in my worm bin. So I'm going to peel back the cardboard. And I'm gonna pull back, I put, I put cardboard and then I put newspaper to try to keep some of the moisture in, which is kind of, I have too much moisture, I think. So maybe I shouldn't be doing that, but uh, it's a good barrier as well. See all these worms here? Those are like a bunch of babies. That's so cool. So I have a layer of leaves in here, but I need to add some more carbon. Oh my gosh, look at all these. There's lots of worms in there, and then there's a big one. See, they're just loaded. Down there, there's so many worms. Look at all these babies. That's insane. I haven't really dug in here in a while. Whoa. I should start selling these. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stop disturbing them. I'm going to bury this pepper that's really past its prime. And so I'm gonna just bury it in here underneath some soil. And I'm just breaking it up and I'm gonna bury it down there. Okay, now that the peppers are decently buried, I'm going to cover, look at this leaf. It's turned to like lace. I'm gonna cover it with paper and leaves. So here I have a bunch of shredded paper. I think it breaks down better. Um, this is all non-shiny, like just newspaper um, that I put through a, sh a shredder. And so I can add that in there. Then I have a bag of leaves here. And then I'm gonna throw that um, wet newspaper, which that, the whole point of the wet newspaper is to keep the moisture in. And it clearly has, it does not have a moisture problem, but I'm just gonna make sure I put a bunch of this dry paper and carbon, whatever you wanna call it, and cover it up. I don't have that much wet newspaper. I'm just gonna cover it up with this, um, this wet cardboard here and pull off as many worms from the top that I can. And we'll check it out on it a week or two and see how it's doing. Just so you know that this worm bin doesn't stink at all. There's no problem with keeping it in a small apartment or in like a living area. It's just another thing for me to move when I do find property. So I decided to keep it here because this is where the, the gardening's gonna happen anyway. So that's, that's my reason, but it doesn't stink. Hey guys, I'm getting ready to leave for work. I got a night shift here and I'm gonna close out this vlog. I appreciate you guys watching. I know that it was spanned over a couple of days, but I have been, that's kind of what I do is I, I run around, you know, I have the dream of having my own place and kind of hunkering down there and setting roots and, you know, just working on a property and making it my own, but right now, I'm living in an apartment and I don't really feel like being here. A lot of the people I love are over an hour away. So that's what I do on my days off. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.